so it's been quite a long time since I last made an assembly video. Um, I haven't actually programmed an assembly for three or four years. So forgive me if I make some mistakes in this video. But I kind of want to get back into it and just kind of show you guys the basics of x86 assembly. I'm going to assume that um, you didn't just stumble upon this video and decided to learn assembly. You're, I'm going to assume that probably you guys are in college and uh, learning assembly for one of your classes and you already have some knowledge of computer science. Some of the things that you should know before watching this video are some of the basics about uh, decimal numbers, binary, hexadecimal, how many bits are in a byte, how many bytes in an int, uh, things of that nature. So the book I'm going to be using is called Assembly Language for x86 Processors by Kip Irvine. I'm going to go ahead and jump to page 37. So in this video, I want to go over uh, registers and what they are and how to use them, that sort of thing. So registers are basically areas in memory where uh, numbers can be stored and operations can be performed on them. So uh, the there are eight 32-bit general purpose registers. And when I was in college, kind of the most important ones you guys should know are these ones here and ESI, EDI. I don't quite remember ever using these ones. We probably did, but uh, yeah. So anyways, so the EX and EBX register are pretty similar. They're used for storing numbers and you can perform arithmetic operations on them. ECX is used as a loop counter. So you'll see later on when you create a loop, uh, if you wanna tell assembly how many times you want a loop, then you gotta put a number in here. Uh, EDX is kind of a volatile general purpose register. It's generally used for storing short term variables within a function. Um, but you could also store, uh, you know, whatever number you want in EDX too. EBP is kind of a weird one. I think that one has to do with uh, higher, high level languages to refer to function parameters. ESP, that one stands for extended stack pointer. Don't quite remember, but it has something to do with the stack. ESI and EDI are both basically the same thing, pretty similar. Um, they have to do with array indexing. So you'll see later on when you create an array, if you want to get the next element of the, of the array, then you need to increase the ESI register. So registers can be split up into different parts. So let's take the EX register, for example. It's a 32-bit register, and if you want to just work with the lower 16 bits, then you can use AX, or the lower 8 bits, you can use AL, or the upper 8 bits, AH. So I'll give you some examples over here in a minute, but this table kind of shows you how these registers can be split up into 8 bits, uh, 16 bits. These registers here can only be split up into 16 bits. And yeah, all right, so let's go ahead and get into the code. Let's say you want to put in a number in EAX. So I'm going to do a move EAX. And let's say I want to put, I don't know, 5 million in there. So since EAX is a 32 bit register, that means the maximum number that we can store in there is around 4 billion. If I want to store a number in AX, the maximum number I can store in there is 65,535. So I'm going to put 65,000. With AL, maximum number I can put in there, since it's 8 bits, is 255. So I'm going to put 250. All right, cool. So I'm going to step, put a, put a breakpoint there and step through this. Start debugging. So when you first start out, you're not going to get these two windows here for debugging. If you want to get the registers in memory one window, just go to debug, windows, memory, memory one, and then registers is right here. All right, cool. So notice that there is already a number in EAX. This is basically just a 
garbage number. I think just some address and memory. Um, but we're going to change that once we uh, put in 5 million in EAX. So I'm going to step over that and you'll see that 5 million is now put into EAX. But this is a decimal, so assembly takes the decimal, converts it into hexadecimal, and puts the hexadecimal of 1 million in EAX. So now I'm going to put 65,000 in AX, which is the lower 16 bits of EAX. So watch very carefully what happens. So I'm going to step through this. Uh-huh. And notice that only the lower 16 bits of EAX changed. Uh, the 4 and the C are still there because we're only working with the lower 16 bits. Same thing is going to happen when I put 250 in AL. So step through this. And now you see that the lower um, 2 bytes are uh, uh, changed. Alright, and that's pretty much it guys. So you guys can go ahead and try that on your own. Maybe use different numbers. Perhaps you guys could use a different register, like EBX, BX, and BL. But that's going to pretty much do it for this video. Uh, I'll be making some future videos going in depth a little bit more with like the other registers, like EECX and ESI. Uh, my next video is going to be about assembly data types. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Until next time.